<laughs> we, we got Jim Ziegler and Bill Whitmire. Hello, Bill. Hey, Jim. How are you? Fantastic. A little technical glitch getting on, but we're all set now. I am so excited. Of all the speakers in Battle Plan, you're one of the ones I always look forward to hearing. Thank you. That's a really high praise coming from you, Jim. I really appreciate that. Okay, we got Bill Wittenmeyer from Elead One One, uh, premier CRM application. I'm telling you, uh, Bill. First of all, before we get into my business, let's talk about your business. Sure. Uh, tell me about Elead CRM. What are you guys all about? What services do you offer? Uh, why are you better than everybody in the universe? Tell me. Well, I, we just we just we're honored to be in the space with some great competitors. Um, you know, I think our biggest thing, Jim, as you know, is being a privately held company and, and and being the largest privately held company in that space. And our biggest thing is really being a partner and and not a vendor, right? We really want to be tied into our clients' business uh, as an invested interest. And you know, I think that's really important when you're looking for good partners uh, versus vendors. You know, there's so many out there that just want to take your money as a dealer and and versus try to make you money. And I I think that's a yeah. huge difference when it becomes uh, the difference between a partner and a vendor. So we really look at our business as, as being a partner, you know, what ways we can help our dealers succeed, um, how they can be optimized for the future, be ready you know, at their pace with their culture. And, and look, CRM and, and all these other great things, there's no such thing as CRM in a box, right? Every dealer is different. You've been to hundreds of thousands of dealers in, in your lifetime, and, and you know that even in the same city, the culture can be different. Um, and that's just huge. You've got to be able to build those customized processes, you know, around that store and their culture. Amazing. I have always been critical of CRM because it's programmed by geeks for geeks and they don't consider the culture of the dealership. They don't program for us. They program for the way they think it ought to be. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, we're, we're so not just you and I, but our business, we're so unique. And, and I think there's some things you have to take into account for that. And, and look, a lot of us don't like to learn new things. So I think you've got to really build around, you know, solid foundations of items that we already know and we already do, and then incorporate that with the customized processes inside the store. You know, this is, as you well know, this is not a show me business, right? It's, it's, a, it's a do it business. Um, and, you know, you, you don't go in and trust, you, you make sure you have to have a good partnership there. So, yeah, there's too many people and too many other uh, vendors during the years that have kind of put it, made it tougher on us, you in, in, as well, where, you know, we've got to show them how to get it done. I mean, if there's anybody that does that, it's you. I mean, I, I, last time I saw you, you're out pulling somebody out of the uh, out of the center lane in a car and trying to sell them a car. So, I mean, you know, when, when we talk about any of these things, it's a, it, you know the story I'm talking about because it's a true story. So, you know, I think it's really all about, you know, making sure that it works for that custom culture. It's not CRM in a box and, and it's not vendor in the box, you know, right? You've really got to have that support and those tools. And, and that's really how I describe us to a lot of different people when we get asked. Well, you know, it's it's amazing. You and I have a a background where our paths sort of crossed. Yeah, yeah, in, in, in a parallel universe. Yeah, uh, the, the Coggan organization. We, we, we both came out of the, the Luther Coggan organization. And was it already Asbury by the time you were there? Was it? It, I, was, I was right before it turned to Asbury is when I joined Luther. Um, so I got kind of the best of both worlds uh, with Luther heavily involved uh, and a great influence and, and just a tremendous amount of talent inside those stores as well. Well, help me out. Um, stroke my ego a little bit. Had you heard of me? <laughs> well, they, they still have the record books of you there, although, you know, you can't say that around Luther too much. I think I think you made too much money from him and he was mad about the big checks he had to give you. No, I'm just kidding. Luther was a very generous guy. So he was, but yeah. I set every record in that organization until the day I left. That's absolutely a true statement. Um, and, you know, and, and the amount of talent that came out of that organization uh, to even be a part of that organization is one thing. Uh, and then to be at that high and help esteemed in the organization is really like the stratosphere. I mean, every single one of the managers I was with now uh, all either own several dealerships or they're running large automotive groups with ownership. And that, I mean, Don, were, Don uh, Jenkins, did you know him? Yeah. Don Jenkins. You've got uh, Dale Murray, who's got the Murray group. You've got, uh, uh, Tom Moore, who's running the uh, Morgan Group for Brett and Larry Morgan. 
Um, I mean, just a tremendous amount of talent that came out of that organization that I was really fortunate to be around and and follow somewhat in your footsteps many years later. Just not as not as many records, that's for sure. Well, breaking the records has been a been a fun thing. Let me let me talk about challenging tradition, building a high performance sales team. Internet Battle Plan Twenty Three. We're coming. Teach at the Beach Number Three. Um, the Winter Conference. Yep. Clearwater, Florida, the 12th and 13th of February, Internet Battle Plan. Now, you've been a speaker at five Internet Battle Plans. It, well, that's it, it feels like less than that, so that's good. Um, I thought maybe it was a little bit less. I, I should be more, but uh, I love the way uh, – and the winter one is awesome. Uh, and what a great venue and event, too, and, and time frame in terms of timing. I'm sitting here in central Florida right now, and I'm looking out the window, and I – I think there's a cloud somewhere in that sky. <laughs> it's mostly blue and it's 75 degrees. There you go. There you go. If if not for any other reason, that should be it. I'm talking to all my Chicago buddies right now. <laughs> you know, they're not quite faring as well as we are. <laughs> no, some tough winters in certain parts of the country for sure. Oh, man. Well, tell me about challenging tradition, building a high-performance sales team. Now, that's what you're going to be talking about at the event. Yes, sir. I, I think it's really important. You know, we, we can have a lot of great advertising. We can have a great digital presence. Um, you know, we can have awesome e-commerce processes. But, you know, it still, in my opinion, boils down to that face-to-face, -face, that interaction and that customer experience. And, and what I think we have to do is we have to find, um, certainly for the next generations, but, you know, a non-conventional and a high-performance sales team, it's really the key to any successful dealership and, and really any organization. And it boils down to those people. What are those processes? What should you be looking for? And then once you have it, what are you doing in the coaching and counseling? And what are those activities that you're concentrating on? Because with a good core group that has those characteristics, you don't have to teach a lot of skill. You just have to make sure that you've got your dialed in activities and they're going to get it done. And that's what I'm going to talk about when we're all together at the Internet Battle Plan. I've got a Zieglerism that goes right, right in with that. Average people with great processes can achieve incredible results. Absolutely true. Absolutely true. And, you know, there, there's so many different ones. It's always the P's and, and the last one always ends up with people, right? It's It still boils down to people. Um, I, I don't believe the hype that the dealership's going away. Um, is the process going to change? Of course. Uh, do we need to be able to stay in front of that and, and provide that great customer experience and that optimization uh, and that personalization? Yes, absolutely. But at the end of the day, the core is still those great sales teams, those great people that are going to provide that experience, that information, and at the end of the day, that customer's experience to make sure that they're getting all their needs fulfilled in their buying decision. I understand you guys got some OEM endorsement lately. Uh, we were very fortunate uh, with the Ford uh, Motor Company and Ford Direct and, and the CRM with Ford Direct CRM uh, and Pro. That's been a great relationship and, and wonderfully supported uh, by the folks not only at Ford and Ford Direct. And, and we've had tremendous growth there uh, for our Ford dealers and some really cool, unique uh, integrations that they can't find anywhere else. Uh, and then next up is General Motors with the uh, with the Platinum CRM as well that uh, has just been announced and some unique integrations there. So, yeah, look, the OEMs continue to play a really big part. Uh, you and I both have the same opinion at times. You know, they can either be a great asset or a great hindrance to dealers. You know, right now in some areas, they, they're certainly really been a great asset when it comes to, you know, allowing some of these integrations and rollouts to really try to streamline that process. So, you know, the desk manager is not sitting there having to look at five or six different screens just to present people numbers and, and an opportunity to buy. So a Ford dealer... E-Lead is, is an option on the OEM program? Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it gives them not only uh, special pricing, which, of, of course, goes without saying, but, you know, even more importantly, above the value, you've got the, the added of the exclusive integrations directly in Vincent, their dealer locate system, uh, and all the way connecting through all their communications with consumer connection. Uh, there's a lot of great feature sets that all tie into that systematically so that they don't have to go log into Vincent. They don't go have to lo log into dealer locate. They don't have to go log in to find the invoice. It's all connected within the CRM really giving a great experience, not only for the desk manager and the, and the salespeople inside the store, but obviously that's going to translate over to a great experience. You got that kind of interconnectivity? Yep, that's exactly right. 
that, I, I wasn't even aware of that. I mean, I, I try to be aware before I do one yeah, of these. Cool. Well, tell me about a 24 hour chat. Does anybody have any of that happening? Yeah, you know, we've uh, got some excellent partners on that. And Car Chat 24 has been a recent partner we, we've gotten dialed in with. Um, and between our call center, our agents, the CRM, and then, of course, um, their agents and their chat feature set. It's been a wonderful partnership. It's been allowed us to uh, expand kind of our space there, uh, more opportunities and tools for our dealers, but still integrated directly within the CRM, right? So now you're containing those chats within the CRM. All that information is in one place. And really what we want to do is we want to make it as seamless and as easy for dealers and customers as we possibly can. And in my opinion, it's always been a lot less tools and a lot less places to log in. Keep it in one place. I think you'll get more effective execution done. Hey, Michael Chaparro just showed up. Great guy. Great guy. You got to hold on to him, though. He's he's always going at about a thousand miles an hour. He's like the road runner. <laughs> you know, hey, but yeah, he's going to he's going to be there. That's right. That's exactly right. OK, let's see. We got Brad Pichelle on this thing, too. Great guy. Great the guy. <laughs> you know? Oh, man, I am so excited that you that you're here now. Me too. I, I, look, I know. I know that you called it a semi-retirement, which means you're only working eight days out of nine a week now. So I get it. Uh, but you know, still excited, trying to make the max opportunities, of still seeing you and and getting as much as I can. I'm fortunate. I've been around you for a long time, and and uh, and I know the rest of the generations uh, they'll still have an opportunity to to learn from one of the great ones. So I I really appreciate everything you've done for me uh, in my career, even when even when you didn't know it. Uh, even when I was at Cog and trying to chase after your ghosts and uh, I couldn't be prouder to be a part of your event and, and just to call you a friend. You know, it's amazing because you and I, you and I, we, we hit it off immediately and I didn't even know about your Coggin background. And yeah, I, you know, birds of a feather sometimes flock together. I think that's what's great about our industry. There's so many really wonderful people in this industry. Um, and, and it's amazing how similar they can be and, in their characteristics and, and, and their character. Um, you know, you've always been a big advocate of paying it forward and, and I'm the same way and, and about supporting others and giving out as much as you can. And look, it, it'll come back to you um, and it always does. And, and again, things that I've learned from you and, and have always held true. So I, I think when you see those commonalities, it certainly makes it a lot easier. And you're also a really genuine and authentic guy. And, and you know, I am as well. And, and there's nothing can better change, than that. Can I change your opinion on millennials? <laughs> yeah, we've had we've had we've had good spirited discussions on that. I've come around. I've come around. Well, you know, <laughs> millennials. I I think millennials are cool because they they've turned into us. Yes. Yeah. You know, and I I always said, don't worry about millennials. When they get old enough, they'll turn into us. And, and eventually they do. Right. And, and you know, I, there's a lot of truth to that. I, I think we still as an industry are probably going to have to address, um, you know, some of the employment and, and hours and some of the things that we do uh, from a hiring standpoint uh, and management standpoint, um, specifically when you look at pay plans and what do those things tie into? Because I do believe they definitely have a little bit different outlook on life than you and I did. I mean, you and I got in for the three D's, right? The demo, the day off. Um, and the draw. And, and you know, they're looking for something that's a little bit different. I think they're looking to be a part of things. They want to have some empowerment. Um, obviously, time off is a little bit more important, having that flexible schedule. So I think we're going to have to make some adjustments. And, and hopefully the good dealers already are uh, because they're going to be a real integral and key part of, of us going forward in this business. Well, they've, all, they've all grown up till they were like 28 years old, living in mom's basement on a pullout sofa, playing Xbox. <laughs> that's right. That's exactly right. But hey, mom and dad were still buying them cars, so there's nothing wrong with that. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll tell you. You know, I've got a 28 year old son. You know, and uh, he's he's on his own now. I mean, he's married. He's got a family. He's doing barbecues on the weekend. You know, but till he turned like 25, he was like a booger. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you thought you flicked him away, and shit, he's still there. <laughs> yeah, I know that happens. That happens. But look, they all do figure it out. And, and at the end of the day, they all figure it out. And, you know, it's going to be an exciting time in our business. And, you know, look, I, I don't believe in the naysayers that are out there that are talking about how, you know, the, the brick and mortar is going to go away. Look, the only thing that is going to happen like that is if we allow it to happen ourselves. And I think the dealer body uh, is well too smart for that. 
Uh, I think we've got some really great people out there that are educating dealers in that way to keep them from hurting themselves. And, and look, this is such a great business. You know, every time we're throwing a curveball, uh, you know, whether it was the, uh, the the recession in 08 and 09, you know, whether it's, you know, hurricanes, whether it's taken out, you know, the, the cars coming from Japan. Look, all the time we have something. Um, we always, always find a way to hit. Always. Yeah. Yeah. We I mean, always do. Look, look at this. I'm I got into business in 1976. I walked into a Coggin dealership and said, I'd like to be a car salesman. The truth was I was divorced. I was depressed. I was dropping out. And I was going to do this just long enough till I could get a respectable job. And that was a good day. Yeah. Yeah. The mattress wasn't even tied to the top of your car. Not yet. <laughs> I know that story. I made $4,500 my third month in the business. Yeah. Yeah. I had never made that much as general sales manager of a ma ra major radio station. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was executive money. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, and, and look, again, this business, um, I think it attracts some really phenomenal people. Um, and the other great part about it is it's the great equalizer, right? You know, to your story and to your point, uh, it doesn't matter what you look like, what you believe in, where you're from, what your family does, what your religion, none of those things. You can absolutely succeed in this business uh, when you have that passion, that purpose, uh, that drive, uh, and you execute. If you do those things, it's really unlimited in this business how far you can go. Um, and you create your own brand. Bill, I know 40 salespeople, persons, that make upwards of 40,000 a month. Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and they're wondering how do they get more? They're black, they're white, they're Hispanic, they're old, they're young, they're men, they're women, they're born here, they're born somewhere else. Yeah. All kinds of people, all types of people, all, all ethnicity, all geography, uh, bur urban, suburban. I mean, yep. all kinds of people, but they got two common traits. They manage relationships, and that's what CRM does. Man, you know, manage relationships. You know, I had a CRM when I was selling cars. Yeah, a box. It was, it was a ten key and and two boxes full yeah. of Rolodex cards. Exactly, right. <laughs> and it, and move from the from the back to the front and just keep going through <laughs> every day. <laughs> Absolutely. Every single day it really is the great equalizer. And, and I think that's what, you know, the real, I, I don't even call them hustlers anymore. It's just, you know, those people with drive and, and willing to execute. Um, and, and look, the, uh, some things do require sacrifice. You know, sacrifice doesn't mean you have to kill yourself. It just means that, you know, you're going to give up certain things to do certain things. You may be not going out every Friday night, Saturday night. Maybe you're going to stay home. You're going to study a little bit more on, on your product knowledge and become a true professional salesperson. Or maybe you're going to spend that extra day in the dealership. The reality is if most people just worked as hard as they thought they did while they were at the store, they wouldn't have to worry about those nights and weekends. They'd have them free already. Absolutely. Bill, the Internet Battle Plan is the 12th and 13th of February. The website, Michael Chaparro, put this on the sidebar for me, www.internetbattleplan.com. Michael, Michael's still on us. Michael, put that on the sidebar, put it in the notes, Internet Battle Plan. And they can call me, Bill. Yeah, absolutely. 352-775-2174. Call the dog. Dealers and general managers, no charge. Yeah, that's because awesome. Unfortunately, there's a lot of dealers out there that have technophobia. Well, it's hard to learn something new. I mean, you know, look at look at Mark Connor and Lot Links. I know he's going to be presenting uh, yeah, but, where yeah. they're at with artificial intelligence uh, and the way they're identifying leads. I mean, nobody would even thought of that five years ago. I mean, this moves at such a tremendous pace. You know, you've got to be reinventing and learning all the time. And you know, even Tom Moore running the Morgan Group I mentioned earlier, an ex Asbury slash Coggin, original Coggin guy. You know, he learned uh, one of the greatest things I've ever learned from him is he continued to learn how to reinvent himself. Um, and, and now he's one of the greatest e-commerce of understanding that and, and doing a great job with Brett Morgan at the Morgan Group. So, you know, you've got to be able to move past the ego and don't let that keep you from getting a paycheck. And, and that's why it's so critical for D dealers to continue to learn those things and, and not be that technical scared, right? Be able to get in there and it, there's some great people that will teach you how to do it. And not only that, they'll show you all the reasons and, and how to get it done. You know who one of my general managers was when I was a salesman? Oh, uh, are they still alive? Yeah. 
Don Jenkins. Oh, yeah, Don. Well, he's doing really well. So those stores, they're probably not too far from you if you're in Central Florida. So oh, he's got stores right here in Central Florida. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. great group. Um, Donnie Jenkins is doing a lot of that for him now, his son. And 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 they, they're a tremendous partner of ours with some really great people. And you know, Don lives in the Bahamas and so oh, yeah. yeah, he just calls in to make sure there's enough cars being sold every night. Yeah, he's like Scrooge McDuck. You ever see the picture of <laughs> the Scrooge is in the bank vault throwing the money up in the yeah, air? <laughs> yeah, I think that's what Luther's doing now, too. Oh, I'll tell you, Luther, Luther was, he said, Jim, how do you sell 30 cars a month? I said, you show one every day you show up, show up. That's exactly right. I, if I'd have had e-leads, if I'd have had a CRM, that could could manage my productivity. Yeah, I'd have sold sixty cars a month. Yeah, and and I think that's what's great about the business is you know the really good strong professionals embrace all of those different technologies and those tools, right? When it makes sense to them, and yeah, and 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 again, I look back too, and yeah, you know, sixteen years ago, you know, before I joined uh, here at Elite One, when I was in retail with with Mr. Cock and some other great organizations. You know, just having even half the tools that are out there now back then, where would I be? So it certainly would have been a great assistant to me then. Um, it's certainly a great one now for the true professionals. And, and it's great to be a part of that and, and to support people in that way. Well, how can I get in touch with a sales rep at your organization, especially those Ford dealers that have the, fa the factory connection and the discount? How can they get in touch with one of your salespeople? Uh, easy. They can go straight to our website, www.eleadcrm.com. Um, that's always a great tool. There's a couple they, of things. slower. www. Elead, E-L-E-A-D, crm.com with a hyphen in between the Elead and the CRM. Elead, no S, yep. Elead dash crm.com you got they, it you they got can get, it they can get a demo yep absolutely they could get all the information they need uh of course anybody can reach out to me at any time at billy the kid wit on twitter uh i always answer back and, and always trying to get on there so happy to uh happy to support or help anybody in any way or any questions they might have well i'm gonna take this show that we've just done and i'm gonna splatter it all over the internet perfect thank you You'll see it. You'll see it on LinkedIn. You're going to see it on Twitter. You're going to see it. On, I've got probably 20 Facebook private pages and I've got two big private groups. So we're going to put this broadcast everywhere. Internet battle plan coming to Clearwater, Florida. Teach at the beach. All you Yankees and Midwesterners <laughs> freezing your butts off. Come on down February in Florida. What are you thinking about? Hey, February 12th and 13th, two days before Valentine's Day. It's going to be in Clearwater. The website is www.internetbattleplan.com. Dealers are free and general managers are free. And we've got some spectacular speakers. I mean, executive speakers, great, great thought providers like Bill here. Bill there. I mean, it's absolutely incredible. Bill Wittenmeyer, Elite, thank you so much. Jim, thank you as always. Uh, God love you. Thank you for everything that you always do. Really looking forward to seeing you and certainly Debbie on the 12th and the 13th. So uh, have a tremendous day if there's anything. One last thing, Bill. Yes, sir. You need to give Melissa Maxey a raise. <laughs> She's already making more than everybody at the company. My God. I don't, know how she does it. I don't know how she does it with all those taxes. What a sweetheart. She is absolutely the best. Take care, big guy. Thank you, Jim. You too, dog. Have a great day. Bye-bye.